Welcome to In The Workshop. And in the workshop today, I'm making some modifications to my Stuart Models Victoria. This Stuart Models Victoria is part of a really good steam plant that I bought recently, and I featured it in a video, so if you haven't seen that, it's probably worth watching. There's nothing much wrong with this steam engine, but I want it to be something special. The first problem that I discovered was a tapping noise when the engine was running, and this was because the crank web was pinned to the crankshaft with a parallel pin. So by using a taper reamer and fitting a taper pin, the tapping disappeared. There are two more problems that I would like to put right, and I can correct both of the problems at the same time. The first one you can clearly see here. The steam chest cover is quite rusty and needs cleaning up. The first thing to do is to remove the small 7BA nuts that hold the steam chest cover onto the steam chest with these studs. The normal way of fitting studs, or the normal way I fit studs, is to use the shorter part of the stud to go down into the casting, that way the stud bottoms at a certain height. But whoever's built this has done it the other way round, they've put the nuts on the short part of the stud, and the longer threaded part of the stud goes down into the casting. I suppose it's a good way of doing it, because the nut can only travel so far on the short piece of thread at the top of the stud, until it meets the parallel part of the stud, and you can tighten the nut down onto that, but then of course when you undo the nuts, the whole stud comes away. On very small steam engines, I prefer this method, particularly when you're looking at 10BA studs. I've removed all of the studs, but the steam chest cover does not want to move, so there must be another stud in there somewhere, probably underneath the governor fitting. And that's the next thing to remove. This time, these brass nuts are coming off, they're not pulling the studs out with them. I'm just demonstrating my manual dexterity, which probably comes from being a keyboard player, as I remove both of these brass nuts at the same time. I then remove the last thing that was holding this steam chest cover in place, a countersunk bolt. And now I can see clearly what's inside the steam chest, and not unsurprisingly, it's a slide valve. The valve timing is slightly out on this engine, so what I'm going to do here is refit a couple of the studs to hold the steam chest in position, so I can turn over the engine and have a look at the valve events. What you can't see from the video is that the engine is still warm, and I haven't flushed the water out. I did this on purpose so you can see just how much water is left in the steam chest, quite a lot. And there's some in the cylinder, so it's very important after a run to blow it through with compressed air, and then blow some oil through to help prevent rusting. After I initially checked the position of the valve as I rotated the engine, and I did find that it's not quite right, I'll put that right shortly. I removed the steam chest and the valve to have a look at the port face. And that's fine, it just needs a clean up. And the valve is not right, the valve is a little bit too long. I need to machine a tiny bit off this. When setting up a model steam engine's valve timing, it's quite important to have early admission. That way the steam is admitted just before top dead centre and it cushions the piston at each end of the stroke. But be warned, if you haven't done this before, you'll probably take too much off the valve, and if you do that, the slide valve won't be long enough to span the ports properly. In this clip, I'm cleaning up the top surface of the valve chest cover, because it's quite rusty. The underside is not that important, I gave that a quick clean as well, but it's not as important as the top part. Trying to avoid unnecessary work as usual, I didn't remove the cylinder to clean up the cylinder port face, I used a piece of steel plate, and some 400 grit wet or dry sandpaper. The port face wasn't very bad anyway, but it's not recommended just to use some sandpaper. You definitely need it on a piece of flat plate like this. This job took quite a while. This is the edited version. And I also used some machine oil on the port face so that the sandpaper didn't clog. In the end, I got a very smooth and very flat finish. In this clip, I'm adjusting the position of the slide valve relative to the valve gear. There's a little bit of slop in the valve gear, but this is never an issue because the engine's only going in one direction. But when setting the position of slide valves, it's very important to always turn the flywheel in the same direction. And in this clip, I'm purposely breaking the rule so that you can see the backlash. There's a direct relationship between the slide valve and the piston. You can't actually see the piston, but you can see the connecting rod. So as you turn the flywheel, the slide valve needs to just uncover the port at each end of its travel, just before the connecting rod reaches the end of its travel. And I don't mean when the piston's halfway down the cylinder, I mean just before. And by far the best measurement to use for this is just a gnat's dick. 
a very small amount before the end of the travel of the connecting rod at each end of the stroke, the slide valve must just uncover the ports at each end. Again, a very tiny amount. I am going to make some new gaskets for this, but for the moment I am reusing the old ones, and they are not very good, but they will do for the test. I may have to remove all this assembly again, if the valve events are not correct the first time, which has been known. With the help of my video editor, I am just materialising some studs, yes there they are, and now I can fit the governor housing. And once again, for the reason that I have just mentioned, I am reusing the old gaskets temporarily. All I need to do now, is just refit the steam pipe, and raise some steam. As the boiler was still quite hot from the previous run, before I dismantled the engine, there was soon sufficient pressure to drain the displacement lubricator. As it turned out, when I ran the engine it was fine, so I dismantled the steam chest again, and took out the old gaskets, made some new ones, fitted those, and these are the old gaskets that are pretty nasty, so I'm just screwing one up and throwing it away. After giving the parts a quick clean up with a cloth, the engine runs. This is perfection, well nearly perfection, nothing's totally perfect. I'll let the engine speak for itself, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.